Without objection, the chair recognizes Ms. Thompson to speak against the bill. Ms. Speaker, members, I recognize that the night is long and we've been here a long day, but I'm going to tell you what kind of bill this is for those who would like to know, and for those who don't, I'm going to tell you also. This is a vendor's bill. I know that we talk about safety, and I'd like to know one person in this room who wouldn't want to live in a safe community, who wouldn't want to live in a safe state, and who wouldn't want the security of knowing that when they go to bed or walk out their door, that they are safe. I don't think there's anybody in this room. I don't think there are, most people in our districts would answer the same way that we would. But the bottom line on this particular bill, it is an opportunity for bail bond companies to make money. The next thing is we're going to limit, we're making two distinctions between two charitable organizations. Members, please take your conversations outside the rail. One being a regular charitable organization and the other being the church. And I think we all revere the church and we like the, uh, the work and things that they do. But I don't care how many ways that you slice this apple, how much money, how much lipstick you put on Monique, Monique is still a pig. The bail bonds companies are going to be able to make bail, and we talk about making it tough on people who commit certain crimes. When they go before the jury, the, the judge several times for a bail hearing, some, there's going to be bail set for those who are going to afford to make them. There's going to be a bail, bail company to be able to make that bail. And for those persons who cannot make it will stay in jail, and they might end up pleading guilty and taking some time. And what happens then? We're able to fill our private prisons up. We're able to fill our prisons up, state prisons up, and we're able to give people a job, friends benefits, and some retirement. And it go, the cycle goes on. And then we sit back and we say to our constituents that we have done something to make you safe. And two years hence, we'll come back and we'll repeat the same cycle. But have we done that? Well, you've heard people say, well, these persons have a family, they have children, and you say, well, that's something that they should have been thinking about. And you're right. But you are going to have to think about that yourselves because we are going to have to take care of their, those children on SNAP and other ways and means that we may not have had to take care of them, but for the fact that if they had been able to maybe get a bail, maybe to get a decent lawyer, to maybe to plead their case, or maybe to be able to uh, find exculpatory evidence, we may not have had to pick up those tabs. And we can go home and go to bed and sleep and say, we have done something for our constituency. But ask any of these former prosecutors in here how many times that you see the life cycle repeat itself. And the problem doesn't really stop there. Because you know what we have known for a long time? We hear people talk about disparity studies. We have done studies until they're running out our ears. We know what the problems are in this society. We know how deep they go. We know how deep they go educationally and in other aspects of our society. And we know the things that we can do to correct them. But the problem has been we have not been able to convince the constituency that we represent that we really need to do that. And you know why we haven't done it? Not because you cannot convince the people. That's not the problem. The problem is we are microwave people. We want it in the microwave for 10 seconds, pop it out, have a solution, problem solved permanently. And you and I know that that doesn't happen in life. Why do I call this a business bill? Because this is going to make the bail bond company plenty of money. It's going to make the private prisons plenty of money. It's going to give a lot of people that you and I know jobs and job benefits and retirement benefits. And it has a software part of it. It's going to give somebody an opportunity to get an RFP 
qualified for that and be able to make some money to improve and to develop that software. So what we're doing is we are making money off of the backs of a problem that the people would not allow us to really go deep enough to solve where they can really be safe in their homes and in their communities. So no matter what color of lipstick you put on Monique, Monique is still a pig. Chair recognizes Mr. Smith to close on the bill. <laughs> Boy, I appreciate Ms. T.